She's a real woman with a real life. She's someone you can relate to. Dawn Newton. Hey, welcome to the Dawn Newton podcast. I am your host, Dawn Newton. My guest today is chef, author, and entertaining expert who the Wall Street Journal calls the very best host in the world. I'm talking about Chef Alex Hits. Chef Alex joins me today to talk about his new book, Occasions to Celebrate, Cooking and Entertaining with Style. Alex Hits, your renowned you. chef, expert host, top-selling cookbook author. I mean, it does, the list kind of goes on and on. We're talking today, Occasions to Celebrate, Cooking and Entertaining with Style. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me. I'm just delighted to be here. You know, entertaining... It seems definitely uh, the past couple of years, I feel like we were kind of in a blip. <laughs> we all kind of disappeared, but now we're coming back and it seems like we're coming back with a vengeance as far as entertaining and coming together, still being responsible, but um, holidays are coming and I know everyone is just kind of chomping at the bit to get back to entertaining and having friends over and doing all the things and your book couldn't be coming out at a better time. It's time to go. It's time to be together again. It's time to have fun again. It's time to make these things count again. It was so interesting when I was developing this book. I, it, the, it was The book was originally about the big occasions of life. And I started looking at the big occasions of life. And then I started considering all that went into them, the prep days, the choices, the, you know, the, the, planning the everything and I thought you know what these other days are their own occasions so why don't we just make every day an occasion to celebrate and that's how this book actually turned out and if this kind of a time that didn't ever teach us that I don't think anything would ever do no a whole new appreciation for just coming together we 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 need people need people we we like to have that um we like to have other humans around us for we sure do. and finding that joy and you know the gratitude that comes with it i think it takes it to a whole nother level especially when it comes to entertaining how did you get into entertaining well it's you know just like everything is always about one's childhood right so when i was growing up my parents entertained all the time and then I started entertaining all the time, and it just happened. I, um, I was always interested in food. I loved the whole process of the parties, and these are not frivolous pursuits. They're very necessary parts of, of development and socialization. Um, I can argue that the world would be a better place if we had more <laughs> parties and people to talk to each other rather than, <laughs> rather than just wanting to kill each other all the time, you know? So... <laughs> You know, don't never never think of a party as a frivolous pursuit. <laughs> well, in the book too, it, it's absolutely gorgeous, and I loved in the introduction just the photos, the nostalgia. Looking back, I mean, I love movies from the fifties and sixties, and when they entertained, and how you know it was just such an event. And of course, it's changed since then, but I love to bring that some of that back. Yeah. But even today, it's different. But we still. We love to entertain. I don't even know if we call it a cocktail party anymore. We call it happy hour and apps or whatever term it is, but it seems yeah. to have changed a bit. But I know, you know, bringing that back, the nostalgia piece of it and the history of it and trying to incorporate that today and just... So it, it's so funny. When my first book came out, there were all these, which was now, let's see, 11 years ago, the trend prognosticators in New York that had talked to the publisher said there there will be a return to elegance okay and they told me Alex there's going to be a return to elegance and I was having dinner with Nancy Reagan in California who was a friend of mine and I said okay Nancy now your your time is now because there's going to be a return to elegance and she looked at me and she said fat chance <laughs> <laughs> That was an optimistic I'm not response. sure we've had a return to elegance. Yeah. I'm not sure we've had a return to elegance, but I'm happy that people are interested in, in you know sitting at a table and eating. I mean, I go to restaurants and I see families on their phones, and I think, you know, all of them on their phones, and I think, please put those down and talk to each other. Just talk to each other. You know, even fighting is better than being on your phone. It's so um, funny that you say that because we always, you know, it's the kids or the younger family. We were at lunch mm -hmm. one day and in the booth across from us, I noticed it was an elderly couple 
um, I would say late seventies, maybe early eighties, but I'll be darned if they both weren't on their phone and not communicating. I thought that is really sad. Kind of made me chuckle, but also it's sad. It's, it's sad. It's you know, and it's uh, the irony is that in this age of quote connectivity, we're all so much more disconnected. I mean, just sit down and eat something together and talk. It's not so hard. Tips and advice on how to return to entertaining and also being confident. That was something I found. We had we had a family wedding this, this last summer and having people over and just making sure it was like, gosh, I hope I have everything here. Am I covering everybody? If, if I got kind of the everybody's um, dietary needs hit and the waters and the beverages. I mean, what where do we start when you're feeling clumsy like I was? Well, you know, here's the thing. You will never be able, it's just like you can't do anything. I mean, you know this very well, but you can't please everybody all the time. So you do your best, okay? You make a thoughtful gesture. If you, if you know someone can't eat something, then you don't serve it. But again, then again, you don't solicit opinions about what you can serve and what you can't serve. Um, because you're not a short order restaurant and you're not an airline and, you know, whatever. And they're lucky to be coming to your house. Let's face that fact. You want to please them, but you can't, you, they can't, as a guest, they can't make your, their troubles yours. I say this because I have my own very specific food allergies. I carry an EpiPen when I travel. But if somebody asks me, you know, what are your dietary restrictions? I really don't tell them because I, I feel that I, I don't want to make my issues, you know, someone else's problem. So that's another thing to sort of think about. Um, so if you do a buffet, make sure there's a good variety of things. Um, and if somebody can eat nothing, it's probably not going to be their last meal on earth and they, they have too many problems that you can't deal with. It's just, it's hard to, it's hard to navigate. You know, with the holidays coming, I think we have some good time to start planning so that we're not stressed. Any advice there? Well, that's the key to everything is do everything ahead of time. Cook everything ahead of time. Just heat it up. It's going to taste better if it sits in the refrigerator a couple of days and then heats up. You know, everything is always better when it's done ahead of time. And if something screws up, it'll screw up three days before, and then you'll know <laughs> it screwed up and you can do it again. You know, it's that. <laughs> um, but never leave anything to the last minute and make sure everything's done ahead of time so that you can actually become somewhat of a guest at your own party. Because otherwise, you know, it's just like a lot of work and crazy and you don't enjoy it. Now, everything also has to look easy. Remember, it's never easy. We know it's not easy, but it has to look like it's easy. Because if, if people think you've been straining and stressing, they're going to be uncomfortable. And nobody wants to see you running around in a cold sweat, freaking out popping Xanax, you know, they don't want to see that. They don't want to see you being a martyr, you know, that, I mean, come on. They're there to have an enjoyable time. You've thought of everything, but it looks easy. That's the way, that's a sort of a recipe for success. Well, and it's interesting. I mean, when you're talking about the host <laughs> losing, keeping their composure and not being tied to the buffet table or the, the bar or whatever it is, but being able to leave that area, be confident in what you have out. And go and go be a guest. Exactly. I mean, you've worked hard enough on that party. You should enjoy it as a guest, don't you think so? <laughs> well, how many parties do we throw where we're like, I didn't even sample my own food. I didn't even get to drink my drink. I just was too busy entertaining. Exactly. And um, gee, I'm going to have to make that again yeah. just for myself. How many parties have you hosted <laughs> over your career? Do you even have a number? Oh, God. Um, <laughs> I don't even know. It's so so many. I mean, we could start. My mother says I planned the menu for my second birthday. So, I mean, it starts a long time ago. Who knows now? Who knows now? But it's a lot. And what's been the most, I mean, looking through your bio and I mean, the book, I want to, the book is absolutely stunning. Challenging party or event that you've ever worked on. I mean, there's got to, is there any particular one or couple that stand out? Well, challenging let's see anything worth doing is is a, always a bit of a challenge you know you have to sort of rise to the occasion that's another great definition of the word occasion rising to the occasion there was an extraordinary opportunity that i had several years ago to go to france and i was commissioned by um the french and american government together to um, commemorate the 100th anniversary of the signing of the treaty of versailles 
the Treaty of Paris peace, the first of the Paris peace treaties that ended World War One, at the Palace of Versailles, dinner for seven hundred people, and um, I had full access to all of the archives from the original dinner and you know, the Palace of Versailles and the Elysee Palace in in France. And that was, you know, six months of my life. It was a really amazing, amazing experience um, that I, you know, that I had to learn and do. And, I mean, what an extraordinary experience. That's pretty heady stuff, you know. But I've also, you know, I've had a dinner in a, in a, that I served for 450 people out of a tent in a field in a sleet storm in <laughs> South Georgia. And, and you know, it was a nightmare for me and, and the guys who helped me cook it. But the guests had a great time, so that's all that mattered. And it was, you know, it all's well that ended well, and it was, it was great. But it was in the middle of a sleet storm with no ovens, and, you know, we pulled it out. So anytime these experiences happen, they're all memorable and they're all challenging. Well, I think sometimes, too, just like on, you know, live radio when I'm hosting something live and something goes not according to plan, my listener doesn't know. I know. But you know what? I'm going to be able to figure out how to cover that. So you just think that is how it's supposed to go. So I can imagine in entertaining, you can kind of apply that same thought process. Right. The only difference with with radio and, and live entertaining is that the, the rule on, on the other uh, for not radio is never stop smiling. It's hard to know if you're smiling on the radio. <laughs> <You know? laughs> oh, God, if that isn't the truth. Who is this book for? Yeah. Alex, who is this for? This book was for, is for my family, who have who taught me at a very early age the importance of celebrating all occasions, and for my friends who have, for more than a half century, helped me celebrate. So it's for my family and friends. Mm-hmm. This book. Thank you. That is the sweetest question. Thank you for asking that question. Absolutely. You know, in entertaining, just thinking back to my own experience, and then just all the entertaining things, charcuterie boards and presentation and just all the things that that we're kind of inundated with is how important that presentation is, the serving dishes, or do we overthink that? Or is it just depending on depending on the occasion, more casual, more formal, preparing that. Do I have the right serving dishes? Do I have, do, is the charcuterie board going to make make the Instagram photo list or what's going to happen there? That's a whole, there's a lot of pressure, isn't there? <laughs> <laughs> but I, think, I mean, Instagram has made a lot of pressure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, social media, how does that play into entertaining? I'm curious to your thoughts on that. Well, again, it's the it's the discon it's the connectivity that's disconnection because people worry more about how the social media is going to look than than the actual experience of the party, and so it's it's not good. It's I don't think social media is I don't think it's good for the world. Um, I think the phone. I mean, I'm, I don't want to get on the soapbox on this, but I'm <laughs> going to do it a little bit because we got a forum. Um, You know, I think the phone is the most dangerous addiction that's ever been, and I think it's very detrimental to um, the brain development, the socialization, certainly of young kids, older kids, whatever. Um, I think it's really a very dangerous thing. I think the only thing that we can do to stave the, the, the drain of the abyss is to be together, enjoy each other, live in the moment, and have a good time you know, and not worry about what's going on in the rest of the world out of our control. No, I, mean, I agree on, with that. Or rather, in the rest of the world, on social media, out of our control, you know. Where can we mm-hmm. find the book and learn more about you and your work? Thank you. Thank you. It's, Am- it's Certainly, it's on Amazon. It's in Barnes & Noble. It's in wherever bookstores are. Now, there's so few bookstores, sadly. Um, but um, I'm alexhits.com, my website. Instagram at Alex Hits, and I think I'm on TikTok and thing and whatever, but I don't really know <laughs> those very well. So, <laughs> but but I think Amazon's you know the best for the for the book, and also the last one, the Art of the Host, which is all about the perfect menu for every occasion. That that's a fun book too. Well, this book, Occasions to Celebrate Cooking and Entertaining with Style, I mean, it's absolutely beautiful. More than 100 recipes. We can't fail with you at the lead and guiding us. I appreciate this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you.
Hey, thanks for listening to the Don Newton Podcast, and a special thank you to my guest, celebrity chef Alex Hitz. Alex's message is pretty clear when it comes to celebrations. Whether it's a holiday or just another Tuesday, make every day a special occasion. For more information about Alex and his work, alexhitz.com, and be sure to check out my website, donnewton.com. The Don Newton Podcast is written, produced, and hosted by Don Newton.